This is this is a little version of a viewfinder, and all I did was I swiped a little piece of cardboard from the office and uh, cut a little hole out of it. So the way it works is you can hold it as close or as far from you from you as you need to, and basically it just gives you a quick pass at a composition, right? So like if I were gonna draw you guys, like whose faces do I include and who do I cut out, right? You know, um, or if I'm drawing the room. I can kind of use it to cite angles in a two-dimensional way. So I can look over at the at the corner and see how off horizontal certain things are. Does that make sense? Because if in the viewfinder, right, this is if this is my little frame, and if the wall is here, you know, I can kind of judge that the corner goes this way and the other one is closer to vertical or horizontal, right? And I can use the edge of the viewfinder to help me with that, right? And then if you get really fancy and make one of these at plexiglass, you can put a little grid on it and, and subdivide the viewfinder so you can have like anchor points. Another thing you can do uh, to cite and measure, so this is after you do like your messy blocking drawing, right, and do the gesture type stuff. Then what you do, um, you can hold your pencil out at arm's length, right, and it has to be arm's length, same every time. And you can pick something to to measure and repeat it, just going down the the object. And you can measure across as well. So if I'm going to like draw this skeleton, for instance, I would block in the head, right, and the spine, and the legs, right. And there's not going to be a sense of of weight. And I know proportionally. But about half is from the pubic bone there. That's halfway from head to toe, right? And then the knees are about a quarter, maybe the top of the knee is a quarter. And then the pretty much breastbone nipples is gonna be the other quarter proportionally. So then what I can do is I can measure heads, right? I can go one for the head, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's a little, so it's an eight head thing. So now what I do is I go, I measure my head. One, <clears throat> so I can just kind of make eight divisions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I need one more. Eight. So then I can readjust, right? So I know that the pubic bone actually has to be down here. And then my legs will start just there. And then I can take the same measurement, you know, go back, measure a head, and I can measure width, right? So the overall width of the rib cage is like a head and a quarter. So I can do like a head and a quarter. And that can be my width of the rib cage. And then I can just sort of like, you know, fill in the blanks. I know that the pubic bone goes right exactly <laughs> there. Getting the iliac crest. The spine is a big cylinder that goes up. Whenever you draw a, a skeleton, you want to be sure that you get the spine nailed down. That's like the most important thing. Everything else is kind of secondary. And then, you know, where, you, where does the spine start? Up when way, way back in the top of your head. Right? When people get hanged, the, the bones that, that sit on the top of the spine and rest at the top of the head, they actually slice against each other and <laughs> sever the spinal cord. Yeah. yeah, they sever the spinal cord. So that's why it, it's more cruel to just hang somebody and let them replicate. You got it? That's a little error on YouTube. <laughs> no big deal. So, um, so I can take my head measurement and I know that the head measurement, I can go from the pubic bone down and I can figure out where the knee is. 
So the top of that kneecap is right here. So I know that there's a patella right there. And it can come down. So that's kind of how you can how you can start to lay lay out everything. And then as you as you sight, you can uh, you can just refine and refine and refine doing this for basically forever. Just continue to measure. And just notice what things line up. So what you can do is you can hold your pencil out horizontally and be very honest what's horizontal and kind of measure what's off. So I know that this iliac crest in the back, the top of it, has to be just slightly higher than the one in front, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I start to basically create a sense of landmarks, right? Then I'd also want to get the same thing with the rib cage. So this part is going to be just slightly lower than that. And then I can do the knees the same way. So this knee is going to be just slightly lower, right? So the patella is going to be like right there. Does that make sense? So sighting and measuring is super important. So you do your messy gesture first, then you measure it, right? because you need something on your paper to measure. You can't just start start measuring, make a map, and fill it in, right? So you make an attempt, you measure the object, you measure your drawing, you refine your drawing, right? So most teachers would have you just measure and put the grid down and then fill it in, right? But I don't want you to do that. I want you to, to develop your intuition by correcting yourself, right? And you'll come pretty close after a while, and your, measurings will, your measuring will just kind of be a double check. Then another thing that you can do is you can sight angles, right? So you can actually take take a viewfinder, right? And I have to hold it up close to get the skeleton in. But I can say, well, I want I want to capture like the top angle of the spine. So that's that, right? Roughly. So I want to make sure that the top angle of the spine is similar, right? And then I want to get the the curve just behind the rib cage. So I hold it up, and I can sight like that. So I can make sure that I have a very similar curve. And then the bottom, I want to anchor it like that. So I can tilt it a little more. You see that? So with a viewfinder and a pencil, you can pretty much measure anything. And it works for a linear perspective too, right? So if you're measuring a hallway, you can you can measure the width of the windows. Even, and you just measure horizontally or, or vertically, even stuff that's technically a diagonal in the paper, right? Then you can measure diagonals with the viewfinder. It, you can't really float and measure diagonals, like, because then by the time you pull it down to your paper, you're off. But if you use a viewfinder, you can actually measure diagonals if you're really careful. Neat, huh? It's like, it's almost like cheating. The other way to do it is, um, is to set up a situation with an easel where um, you actually draw sight size. Do you know what that means? So like, to me, holding my hand here, the skeleton is this big, right? So if I put my, if I put my drawing right here, I just draw the skeleton exactly as I see it, right? You know, so if I got this far enough away, this, this original skeleton would, would match up, you know. So, someone hold that? Where, yeah, thank you. Just that side, that's good. So I can just take, I can shut one eye and I can mark off the proportions of the skeleton, you know. Exactly where I see it, you know. And I, the head will go in there, the rib cage here, pubic bone here, etc. right? And that is like, that's like cheating. Basically, it's so easy. And then you can also attach your, um, if you want to do a big drawing, you can attach your writing utensil or drawing utensil to a pole, like a three foot stick, and then stand back and make your hatch marks that way. Works awesome. <laughs>